My name is Howard Greed, and I was born the 4th and 6th and 41 in Lincoln, Arkansas, in, in a clinic. Okay, and uh, the interview is by Scott Davis, and this is part of the Cane Hill Oral History Project, and we just want to be sure that we have your permission to use the video uh, to reproduce for educational purposes. Yes, I'll give you permission to use the video. Thank you so much. Uh, tell me about your parents. <clears throat> uh, my dad, I think, only went to the eighth grade, and that was pretty good back then. And my mom, she uh, she walked over the hill two or three miles down to the Thursday, down uh, uh, on uh, Bush Creek. And that's what were your went. parents' names? Uh, Archie Reed and Esther Reed was my parents' names. Okay, and where did y'all live? Uh, we lived uh, one mile uh, southwest of Clyde, Arkansas. Okay, tell me about your family, other members of your family, your brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I had uh, two sisters and two brothers and a uh, my younger brother, he was always uh, weak. He just a year younger than me, but he was always weaker than me. Uh, there's something wrong with him when he was born, but uh, he passed away when he's just before he turned 70, and my others are still living, and they're doing good. Um, tell me about your family's business. What business was your family in? My dad was a farmer. Uh, He'd plant tomatoes, and we'd pick them. I don't remember how many acres. It seemed like a lot to me. And then he had cucumbers, and you had to pick them every morning, or they'd be too big if you missed one. And then he also milked cows and sold grape seed milk. Uh, what were some of your routines? Uh, what did you do to help out on the family farm and at home? <clears throat> I'd get up early in the morning and... Uh, when I was very young, and we didn't have a barn at the time, and uh, it was my job to milk three of the cows, and uh, it'd be raining while uh, that rain would be falling over, and then he'd build a barn and got a milker, and and, and I helped do all the, uh, I liked to run a tractor, my uncle had a tractor, and dad had a little tractor, and I'd work free for anybody if they let me drive a tractor. Um, what else did you do to help out around the house? Uh, help uh, carry the wood in. Uh, had chores that you'd do, and then my dad cut a lot of poles, and then he'd saw them. And it's always our job to help help stack the wood, and, uh, and then just taking care of the cattle. Uh, Feed hay, that's sometimes my chore. I think we kind of split it up. Uh, my two sisters worked inside a lot, and me and my brothers worked outside. Of course, they worked outside too. My mother, uh, she uh, run the rake with horses, a team of, team of horses. And I remember one time it ran away, that rake, and she just fell over backwards so she wouldn't fall in front of it, and it run down in a thicket. And, got hung. That was early years. What did y'all do on Sundays? What were your routines on Sundays? <clears throat> well, we'd get up and milk as, as normal, and uh, then we always had to get ready and go to Sunday school over Clyde, which I still go, go to church there. And uh, we, uh, my uncle, he'd get up first and go and Uncle Hoy at Reed, and, and he'd build a fire, and, and then the rest of us come, it'd be, we'd all sit pretty close to the stove, but, uh, and then come home, and, and that was uh, one of the times that you'd, uh, you could rest, you could sleep, or whatever you wanted to do on Sunday evening, and, and a lot of time we had a company come for dinner, and visit, and uh, what would the kids do for fun back in those days? <clears throat> well, some of it's kind of rough. We'd uh, have bean flips. We'd get bean flip fight fights with with 
little bitty hickory nuts and stuff like that. <laughs> it it kind of hurt a little, but that's some of the things we do. We play hide and go, all all kinds of games, and we always had a lot of uh, neighbors' kids that come over, and we's always doing stuff. Sometimes we'd just go out and throw rocks at wasp nest and duck down, hope you didn't get stung. Um, tell me about your earliest memories of coming to Cane Hill. Uh, I really don't remember before I started school. Uh, I, well, let's talk about that. What do you remember about school? Well, I had a first grade teacher that uh, is, I think, our first year to teach, and, and she didn't make you do anything. Her name Miss Shoemaker, I believe it was, and uh, she didn't make you do anything. Uh, you just do what you wanted. And then my second grade teacher, well, she didn't like me, Miss Finley, and so I stayed in most of my recesses, and noon hour, and then she failed me after all that. And then I got a super teacher, Mrs. Carter, and she came in and uh, she made me want to learn, and she got me started on the right track, and I always remember that. What did she do to make you want to learn? Well, she's just nice to you, and uh, when when somebody's nice to you, nice back. <laughs> and uh, now she just, uh, I remember one thing, she'd come around and look at your teeth every morning, and want to know if you brushed your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're windy a little, but uh, uh, anyway, she, she she just made and had plays. She'd give me parts and plays, and I was always worried I wouldn't know my part. And, yeah, but I got through it. Uh, who were some of your classmates? Robert Cochran was uh, one of my classmates, and uh, Martha Patrick. Carol Remington, uh, Vicki Banks, she lived right here in Cane Hill. And, uh, uh, that was just about, that was after I failed, that's the one, I don't remember the ones in the first grade. <laughs> I, I asked earlier uh, about what kids did for fun. What did adults do for fun back in those days? Well, they'd pitch horseshoes and uh, of the evening. Uh, a lot of time we'd have ice cream and neighbors come in and they all of them played guitars and fiddles and sometimes uh, people would sing uh, and that was one of their better things they'd do of the evening and uh, that didn't happen every day. But uh, and then when <clears throat> uh, when it's hay time, uh, all the neighbors would come in and. They'd uh, put on a real good dinner, and I was glad when it's hay season because we'd get to eat good that day at noon. And uh, they'd come in, and we had a a square hay baler that was uh, run by a little motor, and that's what my mom was doing was raking hay up to that, and then uh, had one's hard uh, slim down here, the colored guy. He he helped. Uh, Help do that. And I remember one time they were really working hard, and there's a uh, everybody sweating. And I was just a little kid, but I remember it getting ready to rain, and and Slim he says, "I sure hope it do," because <laughs> he's wanting to rest. <laughs> uh, what do you remember about the old businesses here in town when you were a kid and coming to them? What all do you remember? Well, I can barely remember the the bank. I think that's in uh, this. Jenkins' old store, I think, was a bank. I, I kind of remember it, and I remember uh, I might have got shoes, but we'd usually go to uh, Clyde where we'd buy our shoes at Stanley Yates' store. But uh, I think one time across the street here there was a, a place that sold shoes, and Dad might have bought me a pair there. And we'd only get one pair a year, so you had to take care of them. You usually went barefooted in the summer. Did you guys bring any of your, you said you grew tomatoes, did you bring any of those down to the canning factory? Yes, sometimes we'd have them picked up, and, but what he'd try to do is sell them early as green wraps and get more money and uh, wrap them and sell them, but it was hard work. I remember your arms getting green from uh, 
picking tomatoes. And, uh, you pick them green? Well, real early, you could get more money for the, the red ones, you know, for everybody. They'd pick them green and then they'd turn, you know, I guess they send them stored. I don't know where they, I think he took them to Lincoln and they sent them somewhere. Anyway, they had a buyer, but a green wrap brought better than the ripe tomato at the canning factory. Hmm. I didn't know that. Um, what do you remember about the mill, or at least stories about the mill? Do you? Uh, <clears throat> the mill, ever since I can remember, the bottom part of it had dirt over it and it wouldn't rotate. But uh, the story I heard one time, my dad and some others, when he was young, or they uh, started, they was down below and started climbing or something, it, it started rolling and they had to jump off when they got down to the ground level. But uh, that's that's some of the stories I heard. But I, I don't, I, all I remember, they said that uh, you'd bring corn in and they'd grind it and for half or whatever, you'd get half the meal. But, uh, that was before my time when they did that. Okay. Uh, you're familiar with the restoration projects going on around here in town where they're fixing up the yes. college and these other buildings. What do you think about that? Well, I like it that uh, somebody decided to restore Cane Hill, you might say. Uh, all the old buildings, they're putting back kind of original shape and uh, a lot of money spent uh, that Cane Hill, you know, and that don't have, the state don't have. And they're re redoing the old school where I went to school for about nine years, and I like it. Uh, what would you like to see done with that old college building? Uh, I did guess get it where it's safe, won't fall in, and always be there because it's got a lot of history. Uh, even in the Civil War, of course, they think the building was there then, but uh, there was a one there that got burned back in the Civil War. Um, what other stories about Cane Hill can you think of that I haven't asked you or we haven't talked about? Well, sometimes I miss the bus and it's three miles for me to walk home <laughs> and I'd, I'd walk home and, uh, and they were very lenient back when I, uh, my dad had an old ton and a half truck and he raised chickens and he was always short. I forgot to mention that. My, we, uh, on the farm we had chickens too uh, not very many but but anyway the wells wouldn't hold up water on them and my dad let me bring that old ton and a half truck with barrels on the back of it and then I'd drive out here at this spring and fill them and bring them home and he'd dump them in the well to water the chickens and they'd, ver they'd let me go at noon a lot of time and, uh, from school? yeah while I was in school you know get some of my water so so I wouldn't have to be so late after school getting home. So the school people worked with y'all, the yes. farmers? and they give me the job of going down to the, the lunchroom and turning the water off and fixing everything and turning it on in the morning. Uh, I was a little bit bigger when I was a little stouter and uh, I got a lot of jobs like that. I so you that. helped out working around the school then? Well, they just, they just give me the job. I don't know why, but anyway, I got that job and I liked it. And, and also, we had missionaries that come in uh, to school about once a month, and it, they give me the job to go out and help them carry in the board and put the flannel things on, and, and I really liked that. And then if, if you read the Bible enough enough verses I forget. Anyway, I got a free Bible out of that once. And they don't have that nowadays and I think that's why uh, things don't go as good with kids as they used to. What other stories from the old days can you think of? Well, one time we was out in the recess, me and Robert Cochran uh, kind of run together and the teacher wasn't looking and we run down and jumped over that rock wall where the steps where the bus had come in and hid and then took off the rest of the day, <laughs> played hooky. <laughs> That's, I think we might have got a little whipping for it. 
Anyway, I got a few whippings in school. And we always had a good time, Bo. Everybody liked each other, and we'd play, uh, uh, what was it, Rover, Roy Over, Rover, send Robert over, and run down and see if you could break through the the line. And they always liked me because I'd break through the line, and then you'd get to bring back who you wanted. <laughs> that was a good game. <laughs> what else? Oh, we had uh, jungles, we called it. Uh, that was out on the north side. and uh, It was. It was all growed up. We had little trails in there. And at one time, they built a little cabin. The senior boys, they, uh, well, anybody wanted to help. They built a cabin out there. And then down kind of above the school, a little bit south, well, they called it the Rockies. And we'd go play in there. And that was a good place to play. And, uh, and they had the uh, uh, merry-go-round, the slide, which we'd do some, but we liked that playing better, you know, on the natural stuff. Yeah. Uh, any other things you can think of? Yeah, we always played baseball and softball, and I think it's fifth grade I could throw a ball over the tree there, and Mr. Small was the teacher, and he couldn't quite throw one over it. I could throw further than he could. But, uh, I knocked a lot of home runs. We played work up. And, uh, you used to talk about Linda Reed. She, she is a year younger than me in school. But, uh, and Vicki Banks. Well, different ones. You could have somebody play with you, be your mate. So I'd bat and they could run. And I'd knock a home run. Of course, they run. Right. That was a good game we played. So I got a lot of batting experience, and, and I really liked that. And, and I remember uh, where the ball diamond was. Well, I knocked one to the schoolhouse one time from there, and I remember my dad talking that he knocked one that hit, you know, about the second story. <laughs> so I, I didn't knock one as far as he did, but uh, anyway, that, that went way back playing ball there. And, we always played Marl. Sometimes we'd play Lincoln, which we was a little bit out of class, but we had a, we had a, we played basketball too, we had a dirt court, and uh, we was usually pretty good. Conroe uh, Russell, Conroe Russell. That was one of the things, uh, when you'd see him come in the schoolroom, well, you knew he was gonna get out to play ball. And he is kind of our coach, and he did a pretty good job because we we beat like Mara we beat them pretty often in playing ball. But uh, uh, that's that's some good things. And, and and we had walnut trees on the west, and on the east as Rosa. And when you started school, uh, that about the time walnuts <laughs> fall. We had walnut fights. <laughs> you had to be kind of tough because they make a well point. <laughs> but that was another good game. Cane Hill was a good place to go to grade school, all I'd say. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I uh, had girlfriends and uh, Juline, I think I was in the second grade, Juline Cadmus, and I thought she was the prettiest girl I ever seen. And then she uh, left, and uh, I didn't see her until, oh, I was two or three years back. Well, she was up, up there and I got acquainted with her. <laughs> and she didn't have blonde hair now, but uh, anyway, I had some girlfriend that she didn't like me, but I liked, I liked her. <laughs> I think that's about all I tell you about Cane Hill. There's a lot of stuff we did probably not mentioned. <laughs> uh, we'd work hard and the teachers let us out. And we'd play hard and come back in sweaty and, and do our class. And, and then I went to Lincoln in the ninth grade and, and then started playing real ball. 